and they race inside the final half furlong and Famous Dynasty and Holly Doyle are fairly sprinting clear, come from a long way back to win it comfortably. A debut promise, a double for Holly, double for Archie Watson. And they're not going to catch her. Lalania is clear, Holly Doyle, a treble for Holly this afternoon in the sunshine at Thingfield. Easy win for Lalania. Holly, we'll start with uh, a word on the all-female race card that's taking place at Southall on the 8th of March, live on Sky Sports Racing. Four flat races, flawed jumps, all as the kind of wider celebration of what is International Women in Sports uh, Day or week that week. How important do you think these sort of events are and how much are you looking forward to being involved? Um, no, events like this are really important, I think, to allow women riders to showcase their talents. It's going to be, you know, a really exciting day and quite unique as well, I think. I don't know if it's ever been, ever happened before that they've actually got a mixed card. So there's going to be four jump races and four flats. So I'm not sure if that's happened before. So that'll be interesting. And obviously it's going to have all the pantheon of great names in there, all the leading female jockeys of which you are very much one of them. But as still a very young member of the weighing room, there must be a time when you remember sort of watching the girls that you'll now be, be riding, what well, you still ride with every day, you know, back when you were sort of just learning your trade. Yeah, and no, obviously um, when I was younger, I, you know, grew up looking up to the likes of Hayley Turner and Cathy Gannon and now riding alongside the likes of Hayley and people like that, it is a, a little bit surreal. <laughs> and the conversation around female jockeys, obviously we, we all remember kind of Rachel Blackmore's comment saying the conversation is over after she mm. rode those two big winners at Cheltenham, which was a brilliant quote. Do you think the conversation is over? Is it something that you ever think about? Um, I don't really think about it and I think as... A, a jockey it's as you know like Rachel said it, it doesn't really factor in my everyday you know routine at all but obviously from the outside looking in it it's it's not really over because it's still getting talked about which is fair enough because what we're achieving as um, female riders is probably unique to the outside crowd but within the industry I think it's fairly normal now. Have you ever found attitudes a problem or you know, people's perception from the outside, be it the public owners, trainers? Um, not a whole lot really. I think within the industry some people are quite old fashioned um, and stuck in their ways but you know that's just how they are. Um, we've got to deal with it. <laughs> what a year it was last year 2019 and you've kicked off 2020 with you know, four hat-tricks in eight days, it's continued very much where you left off. Is it something you can appreciate now, you can look back on those achievements and, and sort of celebrate? Um, yeah, obviously I really appreciate, you know, how well, I, how well a season I had last year and it, it was amazing and everything, but, you know, that's not the end result for me. I'm just looking to press on and, you know, achieve more and um, I'm never kind of happy or settled with what I'm doing. I always, always want more, so I'll, I'll be looking to the future and... Um, bigger and hopefully better things to come. Yeah, and that seems to be a trait of a lot of jockeys that's kind of on to the next, but does it, does it make you happy at the same time? Do you feel that you kind of get satisfaction out of reaching those landmarks as you go along? Yeah, no, definitely I get satisfaction out of riding winners. Um, that's, that's what, um, you know, keeps me going. But I think once you got, get a taste of success, you know, I personally, all I want is more and more. Um, so I'm, you know, willing to try and push the boundaries that are there to, you know, be overcome. And everything's, it seems, as a spectator, gone so quickly, certainly in the recent years in terms of the success. Can you remember your very first winner? Yeah, my first winner was my first ride um, for Dave Evans as an amateur. Um, I remember I was about six stone. I had about ten and a half stone um, to carry, so, God, I could hardly carry my <laughs> saddle. I think um, I, I, they should just get from A to B, do what you want. I just, you know, I sat, just sat there, rode too short, <laughs> could hardly give it a push or a smack, and then, um, yeah, it won, won well. And I was a bit, you know, I was a bit, everyone was crying. <laughs> it was mad. Class Clown, though, battling back, it's going to be right on the knot. Class Clown's got there. Holly Dawn's done it. She's broken the record. Do you feel in your career it's been well documented you obviously with Richard Hannon and then moved to Archie and momentum really started to build do you feel yourself there was like a turning point where you felt right we're really kicking in now and I'm starting to achieve what I'd always set out to do um yeah definitely I was a bit of a slow burner at the start of my career but I think that's done me the world of good really I've experienced already the ups and downs um, so I really appreciate the good days. You know, the crucial turning point in my career was when I made the move to Richard Hannon's as an apprentice. 
um, my riding just started to improve from then onwards and then um, I was given the opportunities I, I needed. But I've always kind of gone by the thought of preparing myself to be um, ready for when a big opportunity comes along. You know, in racing, you know, things, you don't know what's going to happen from one day to the other. Um, so if uh, at a point in my career I get given a, a massive opportunity, I want to be at, at my best um, for when that happens. Confidence-wise, mentally, how, how difficult was that a process? Or did you always feel that you were kind of strong in that, in that sense from the start? Um, I suppose being in racing from the day one really has kind of helped me. I suppose I've, you know, obviously it took me a while to get going on, so I've been able to sit back and watch other people's reactions to different situations, which probably help help me. Um, but obviously it isn't easy <laughs> for anyone. Um, I, I don't know. I just um, I just look look forward rather than dwell on things. I've heard various rumours about you being able to lift quite a significant amount of weight, which is incredible for someone so small. Um, yeah, that you know, obviously the training has been a massive help, massive help to my riding. Um, you know, without that, I don't know where I'd be really. Um, but it's something I do because I enjoy it and I do it for me. Um, I don't do it for anything else. Um, I know it's beneficial for me and my career, so. I do that. And talk us through what exactly you do We're here at Oaksy House, where they've got the gym, obviously brilliant facilities. What would a normal kind of routine for you involve training-wise? Um, so I usually ride out and then just come straight here, so it's really handy because you've got the PTs, you've got Gavin and, and Rob. Without them, I don't know what I'd do because I'm, uh, I need a good kick at the backside <laughs> um, and a bit of encouragement, but once I'm doing it, I'm fine. Um, I'm really lucky to be as light as I am, so I've just concentrated on, you know, strength training. Um, there's a lot of other lads that come as well, and they use it to s use the exercises to sweat and, you know, lose weight. Um, but I use it to gain weight and muscle mass. Seven and eight. I heard you jumped up the height of your shoulders on one of those. those oh yeah, the boxes. Thing. Yeah, that's incredible I've ridiculous. always been um, quite athletic and, and when I was younger and in school I think I did every sport going I had no interest in learning everything I was just all sport orientated what other sports did you did you focus on when you were younger um, I, I did everything I did rugby <laughs> football netball hockey you name it I did it and playing with the boys in rugby right? yeah <laughs> that must have been quite something yeah that no, was good I um, had to give up because they all grew and I didn't <laughs> yeah sure but the physicality of it obviously something you didn't mind no I didn't mind no. and I probably suppose. put you in good stead for the falls yes yeah, no. probably helped me out to be fair yeah and talking of falls you've ha you've had some nasty ones in the past what have been some of the injuries you've incurred so far in your career um I've found like, I've broken bones and things like that but the head injuries were the worst for me they take a while to get over and you know you think you're all right but you're not yeah. um and they can have con some long-term effects which aren't easy to deal with but um, it's all right now. <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of, have you had a specific head injury in the past? Yeah I had a few concussions all in, in one year, I had about four or five different slaps to the head which, yeah. which weren't great so I think just a build up of all of those um, did affect me a little bit. And psychologically are they quite hard to get over? Do you, do you think about falling if you've had a nasty experience or are you able to um, just put that behind you? I'm kind of able to just put it behind me, I accept it's part of a job um, and you've got to get on with it. I've got a lot of respect for the jump lads. <laughs> yeah, but but coming off a flat horse at like 30 miles an hour is, what, what does that feel like? Not great. <laughs> pretty nasty. It's not good, yeah, you hit the ground pretty hard at high speed. Um, it's, it's not great. And the nasty accident we obviously all know about was that fall. It, was it Hade? Was it Hade? Oh yeah, Hade. With the, when your teeth were smashed in. Yeah. Talk us through what happened there. Yeah, that wasn't a good day. Um, well, my horse stumbled and um, I just bounced me out of the saddle and I got kicked under the jaw which um, made me lose my front teeth and um, did quite a, had, had quite a lot of dental work but luckily it's all fixed now, it did take a while. <laughs> yeah, look, well, it looks great now. Thanks. <laughs> and um, at the time, I imagine that was probably quite hard to deal with, was it, in terms of yeah, um, aesthetically? Yeah, I mean obviously loads of lads lose their teeth jump racing but for me I'm not really... Um, 
a conscious, I don't really care what I look like, I'm not a girly girl, but this really did knock me back a little bit. Um, I'm not sure why, but it did. <laughs> yeah, and it was quite, a, was it a long process to get back to? Um, I actually rode, you know, like a week or so after the accident, it was fine, but it just took a while to get my, my teeth back. <laughs> yeah. What are the biggest challenges in the job for you, in being a jockey? My biggest struggle is the travelling. Um, I think that's probably what every jockey will tell you. It is tedious and it is hard, but it's at the end of the day, it's you know if you want rides and you want to be successful, you're going to have to do it. So just get on with it. Uh, Lifestyle-wise, I think people probably underestimate how tough that can be when when you're really busy and you're going from race course to race course. I mean, how do you manage that that lifestyle? You must some days just be exhausted when you've travelled halfway across the country, getting up to ride out. I mean, it's long, long hours. Yeah, it is. It is exhausting. I'm, I'm not going to lie, but. I've been really lucky um, over the last year or, or so where I've had a good run of things so I've kind of been running on adrenaline and I've, I've been buzzed, buzzed for that so it, it's been easier for me. So what does the future for you, you say you don't set targets but if you were looking kind of you know three five years ahead where would you where would you like to be where would you like to see yourself what experience would you like to have got? Um, I think I you know obviously I, I want to ride a group winner now had quite a few listed winners. Um, I've been, I've had some rides and some good races last year, so I'm pushing for that group winner. Obviously, they're not easy to come across at all. Um, don't get me wrong, I know that, but it would be great. Do you feel any added pressure? You've obviously ridden a, a few good ones now in listed races and stuff. Does it feel different going out, or you just treat it like any other? No, to begin with, well, when I first started getting the good rides, I did used to feel a little bit, oh, it's a listed race, or a good, good race, but now I'm kind of used to it, and it's no different, really.